Right, hello my friends, welcome back to This Week on the Internet. Over the course of the last seven days, Mr. Beast, he's upset Twitter again. Uh, has he said a slur? Has he committed tax fraud? Or has he done some more charity work? Oh no! Jimmy, you big slag. Find out later this episode. All right, my friends, starting this week off, everybody's favorite uh, mentally ill YouTube boxer has returned. Welcome back, Anison Gibb. I've got to say, it's a travesty this man doesn't make more videos. Uh, anyway, Gibb has announced he's joining Kingpin on a multi-fight deal. You might be familiar with Kingpin. They did the Ed Matthews versus Simple Simon um, shit show. Basically, uh, they are doing a high stakes tournament where they've taken eight YouTube boxers and they're gonna kind of fight and knock each other out to see who is the best YouTube boxer. Uh, for example, they've got this fella who has fucking loads of followers, uh, but people don't seem to watch his videos anymore. They've got this fella uh, who just looks like the third Longstaff brother. Uh, apparently he's big in Thailand, where he. Uh, and Tom Zanetti. Good. Someone like Salt Papi, um, I think would make this dead interesting. Uh, but he said uh, this recently. Did they uh, invite you into in Kingpin? Yeah, they really wanted me to fight for, for Kingpin. Um, but unfortunately, um, uh, it was not possible to happen because I'm, uh, I signed a contract with Misfits. Bit of a shame. Uh, I will be watching nonetheless. Anyway, uh, the draw is happening this weekend. We find out who Gibb is fighting on Sunday. My opponent is Austin McBurn. Oh! Uh, it's on the screen right now. Good stuff. Get him wellied, fella. Moving on. Last week, we heard rumors that Andrew Tate has lung cancer. Uh, the person running his Twitter has come out and dispelled these rumors, claiming uh, that he's going to live for 5,000 years longer. I do not have cancer. My lungs contain precisely zero smoking damage. In fact, I have an eight liter lung capacity and the vital signs of an Olympic athlete. The Romanian government has detained Andrew Tate for four months following his arrest in late December, 2022. He's appealed four times, but is yet to have an appeal granted. As one of the most influential men on the face of the planet, it is important for the good of humanity that I live as long as possible. At my current strength levels, I estimate to survive for at least 5,000 more years. Uh, to be fair, he'll probably need 5,000 years to outlast the sentence he's been given. Uh, in the report, it cites he's lost 10 kilograms, uh, and that is supposedly a sign of cancer. Uh, it's probably also a sign of spending ages in a Romanian prison. Moving on, TikTok famous off-license, Wakey Wines has been raided by the police this week. What's the best shopping work, eh? I heard the police were tipped off that it was a um, prime location for illegal activity. The owner of the shop has recently hit back at his haters after it was reportedly subject to a police raid for Class A drugs. Posting on the store's TikTok account, Mohammed Azia Nazir proudly showed a document showing nothing had been found in his shop. We got raided by West Yorkshire Police. Guess what for? Class A drugs. But I'm a changed man. What does it say there? They found what? Nothing found. Nothing found. Oh yeah, changed man. Oh no, he's not Scottish, is he? Oh yeah, changed man, only cannabis now. No, that's... <laughs> oh yeah, uh, changed man now, uh, only only sell cannabis. <laughs> oh, that's so shit at accents. Changed man I am, only cannabis now. Why do I sound like Shrek? That was a good, that was a good. A great Shrek. Oh, changed man, only cannabis now. That wasn't bad, that was more like Lancashire. That was more like, that was more Peter K. Fuck it, uh, forget that joke. Uh, apparently, rumor has it that it was actually the Wakey Wines cameraman that told the police about the suspected Class A drug possession. Uh, this wasn't the first time Abdul has came forward. Also, this week, uh, it has came out that the UK government reportedly considered that it might have to exterminate all of the cats in the country during the early days of the COVID pandemic. 
There was a moment when we were very unclear about whether domestic pets or not could, could transmit the disease. In fact, there was an idea at one moment that we may have to ask the public to exterminate all the cats in Britain. So basically, in July 2020, at kind of the, the height of the COVID crisis, they warned cat owners not to, like, kiss their pets or whatever after a female Siamese became the first known animal to catch the virus. No points for guessing uh, who Kurt Zuma's voting for next. Can you imagine what would have happened if we had wanted to do that? And yet there was for a moment, a little bit of evidence about that. So that had to be investigated and closed down. I wrote the fact that they're suggesting that they could like convince people to exterminate their own cats. Like, they, they eat out to help out. I was on board with that. But I feel like, I don't know what, stop COVID spreading, kick a cat's head in. I, it's a slightly harder sell. Um, it's written down here. Must have been Matt Hancock's idea. He loves destroying pussy. Uh, but we'll ignore that and we'll move on. Two. This week's instalment of Property in London is fucking mental. So a man has decided to cut down on his monthly expenditure by moving into a skip. So this is Harrison Marshall, he's 28, and he's been residing in the eight yard metal box. Uh, it's in Bermondsey, and it costs him just 50 quid a month to live in. I've also got written down here, uh, at least he gets to skip rent. How much rent you paying in London? Oh, how much rent are you paying? That's not the voice of a man whose friends need to live in boxes. Find an almost like a loophole to live in central London for next to no money. So this is the entrance. So you have well, to climb in through there. Climb in. Got a little ring doorbell. Hang on, he's going to be fuming when someone rings up and hires the fucker. Uh, anyway, apparently the home costs £4,000 to make and costs him £50 a month in kind of like ground rent. Uh, so if you added that all up, that would be about 400 quid per month for a year, uh, which could probably get you a box room in Croydon. Um, so retrospectively, I feel like Harrison has made the right choice. Moving on. Also in property related news this week, a two bedroom flat recently used for growing cannabis has been put up for sale via right for £275,000. Uh, and the pictures make for some interesting viewing. As you can see here, here and here, uh, all of the kit is just still in. They've just not bothered clearing it out for the pictures which I respect. I'm unsure if the 200K is coming from like the price of the flat or the street value of the plants inside of it. The images in the listing include a snap of the living room with reflective sheeting pinned to the walls and pipes and wires hanging down from the ceiling. As you can see here, there is also like, they've got fans installed, presumably to stop next door smelling it. And elsewhere, there are even cannabis leaves on display alongside pots filled with soil. The seller was listed as a Mr. Mohammed Nazir, uh, an off-license owner from West Yorkshire. I've got to say, I love how like the, the entire flat is just like a weed factory uh, and the bathroom's still the worst part. Also this week, drinking Coca-Cola and Pepsi might increase your testicle size and testosterone production, a new study has found. <coughs> Hi guys, how are you doing? Terrible. Researchers at the Northwest Minzu University in China set out to discover the impact from carbonated drinks on fertility. Is it just the balls it makes bigger? Apparently, uh, the study relied on animal testing, specifically mice, and found that the male hormone actually increased and the testes got bigger as they consumed more soda. Weird though, I, I was told Coke makes your genitals um, shrivel up and disappear. Also this week, police in Peru made a surprising discovery when they searched a delivery driver who was acting drunk at an archeological site in Puno. Inside the man's cooler bag, uh, they found this, um, a real life mummy that the man had apparently been sharing his room with uh, and considered it a kind of spiritual girlfriend. He had apparently nicknamed the mummy Juanita and put in his bag to take to show off to his friends. Uh, it turned out uh, the mummy was a bloke. Scientists were surprised to find out that although the rest of the mummy had completely dried out, uh, its anal passage was still moist and sticky. Experts said the body was between 600 and 800 years old. Uh, this isn't good. 600 years? God, these Uber Eats wait times are getting a piss take. Also this week, uh, this Alton Towers served breakfast has been gathering attention online. 
for good reason, it's a fucking disgrace. If you look here, uh, they've put beans in a mug and slapped the rest of it in a pizza box. Uh, and I'll be honest, lads, I thought they hit rock bottom um, when the Smiler chopped that lass's legs off in 2015. But this might be a new low. Moving on. This week, a TikToker has gone viral for pulling a jaw-dropping prank on his parents, covering their entire kitchen in peanut butter. His name is Corbin Millet, uh, and his entire profile seems to be based around just pissing off his parents. As you can see here, everything from the countertops to the cabinets to even the floors are covered in the nutty spread. Your mom loves my nutty spread. No, moving uh, on, basically, uh, here is how Corbin's dad responded. Fuck, my dad just went downstairs and I think he's- Corbin! Yeah? You sick fuck! We're gonna get ants, you dickhead! I think it's fake. It's giving fake vibes. But then who, who in their right mind is letting their son do that to their gaff just for like a TikTok video? I'm, I'm unsure. Anyway, uh, shit topic, moving on. Also this week, uh, a new meal deal has dropped that threatens to put Wakey Wines out of business. Prime and an elf bar for $12.99. Oh no, Abdul, get the packet back out. Let's do him one better. Uh, moving on from that monstrosity, also over the course of the last week, Kyle Walker has been caught with his pants down, literally. Basically, uh, according to a report from The Sun, fuck The Sun, the 32-year-old was drinking with friends in a Manchester venue after City's win over Newcastle last Sunday. Uh, a video on The Sun's website appears to show Walker dropping his trousers in front of the two women who he then engaged with in conversation. Um, Kyle's known for his big tackle, but by Jove, that's too far. Oh, I don't even know if that can make it in, it's that bad. <sighs> Moving on! Also this week, we got this video uh, of Jake Paul running away from Floyd Mayweather. That's a man who's not been drinking his Pepsi. All right, and then finally, Mr. Beast has been receiving backlash this week for his recent video where he gave 20,000 kids in Africa their first pair of shoes. That is a mental sentence to say out loud. Some people on Twitter are feeling like he's being a white savior and profiting off the less fortunate. And I'll be honest, right, I do, I do kind of get where some of it's coming from. Like, it, like if you look at some of the thumbnails, the the vibe is a bit like, mm. like this one, for example, kind of screams uh, bloke who's gone on a gap year and made it his entire hinge profile. Or this one that you might have seen recently that isn't from his philanthropy channel. Um, it's kind of giving like, oh, oh, you're not blind anymore. Cry for the camera. But apart from that, I think this whole rhetoric is just, it's just such a chronically online take. Oh yes, exploitation at its finest. Mr. Beast, do the world a favor and stop filming these people who had no consent in being poor. I don't really follow Mr. Beast, but it seems pretty obvious that it's all just exploitation for the sake of his own bottom line. It would be really nice if Mr. Beast fans could just grow a brain and realize that their hero is basically just producing struggle. Fuck me. Like, would you really rather those kids be walking to school barefoot? Like, personally, I feel like the majority of the argument with the white savior thing is that the person in question uh, is doing it for self-serving reasons. But I just don't feel like he stands to gain anything from this. Like, if you look at the philanthropy videos, they're way smaller than his main channel stuff. So it's like, like, it's not like he can gain an audience from it. And then all of the revenue is going straight back into helping more people. Like, yes, right, the wider issue is that this should be being sorted out by some government nearby, but it's not. Uh, and yes, it doesn't prevent stuff like this happening again in the future, but that doesn't mean it's not doing any good. Like, trust Twitter to have a problem with a bloke buying 20,000 shoes for people who didn't have them. Oh, well, you know, what are those... What are those poor people working at UNICEF going to do for a job now? All right, my friends, that is the end of this episode. I hope you have enjoyed. Please join us again next Monday for more of the same shit. Subscribe.